Hello, in today's video, we're gonna be covering lubricating the motion system on your 3D printer. Should you use grease? Should you use oil? And how should you apply it? We're gonna go over some common questions and go over some of the methods that I've been using that I found worked quite well, and I'm gonna be passing this information on to you. So let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna go over, um, there are manufacturer recommendations for certain systems. So for example, on MGN carriages from Hywin, they recommend Mobile Lux EP1 grease. Now, do you have to use Mobile One EP1 grease? I'll touch on that later. And also the method of applying these lubricants will vary. Now, I got a feeling I'm gonna get a ton of comments on this video that I'm doing it wrong, or this is the correct way of doing it, or so-and-so paper about this product says you should be doing it this way. We're just gonna take a step back and acknowledge the fact this is a 3d printer the actual loads on most of the motion systems that 3d printers use are well below their maximum rated load capability especially when it comes to something such as linear rails so while some of the methods i may cover may not be the most optimal or i might not be using the most perfect lubricant for the application it's a 3d printer for the most part as long as it's grease or oiled it should be okay so first off Grease or oil, what should you be using? You'll see some people recommend grease, some recommend oil. Personally, I recommend using grease. Grease I find lasts longer than oil. Oil has a tendency to wear out relatively quickly. And with grease, I find once you pack the bearings properly, it lasts quite a while and also acts as a little bit better for noise reduction in some of the louder motion systems. Now, what kind of grease uh, should you be using? Well, if you look at the manufacturer, like for example, Highwind, they'll recommend a specific grease. However, what I've found from testing and speaking to others, as long as you're using a grease that is NLG0 or NLG1 rated, and that is how thick the grease is itself, you should be okay. Now, I normally use white lithium-based grease. A lot of people prefer PTFE-based grease. Um, as long as you're not using any grease that has any sort of additive that may be abrasive to ball bearings, for example, you should be okay with a NLG1 or NLG0 rated grease for most applications. These are 3D printers. They're not in high force environments. They're not in high temperature environments. So I use everything from spray-on white lithium grease uh, to some super lube PTFE base grease. And for the longest time, I've been using also this tube here of mobile uh, SHC PM460 synthetic grease. It's the official lubricant of NASCAR, then LG 1.5, so it's a little bit thicker, but I like it on my lead screws. So you'll find most off the shelf greases are sufficient for 3D printer application. The trick is how do you actually get the grease properly applied to your rods, bearings, and lead screws. Let's take a look at this on the desk. Okay, so let's start on the bench here, and we're gonna take a look, starting off with lead screws. Um, now with lead screws, these are the easiest ones to lubricate, and you know what? Sometimes you don't even have to lubricate them. Uh, if your lead screw has a nut that's a palm nut or a Delrin nut, these you don't need to lubricate. You're not supposed to lubricate these at all. So you can just leave them aside. Now, if you are using a lead screw that has a brass nut, um, then I'm gonna recommend lubricating it. And lubricating these is the simplest thing to lubricate. You simply take a little bit of grease. Uh, we'll just use some PTFE Super Lube here, for example. And you just kind of apply it to your lead screw. And then you just run the lead screw through the nut. And that's basically it. There's really nothing fancy to lubricating a lead screw. They're the simplest ones. Everything's exposed. You can easily get at everything. Make sure you wipe off any excess grease after it is lubricated. Um, this will help prevent, you know, dog hair, cat hair, dust, anything building up on the lead screw itself that can gum it up. So you don't want to over lubricate them. You essentially just need this nut itself lubricated. And in the future, if you notice it's starting to bind or gum up, clean off the grease and just reapply it. Now, the next motion system we're gonna look at is your linear bearing uh, on the rod. Uh, these are very common in a lot of 3D printers, and this is gonna be the first got you of lubricating. Now, you may think it's super easy to lubricate these. We're gonna lubricate these just the same way as we did our lead screw. We're just gonna apply some grease to the rod, and we're just gonna run it over, but you notice, not really going in. 
And that is because you have a rubber wiper here on both sides. Not only does it keep all the ball bearings contained, it prevents dust and grit from getting in there and gumming up the motion system. So you can't actually put grease on here and slide your linear bearing over and hope to properly lubricate the ball bearings inside. That is not how you lubricate these. You have to do what's called packing the bearing. Now, to do this, you have to have it off of the rod. Unfortunately, these don't really have a grease port, so you are gonna have to disassemble it. So it's best to do this prior to fully assembling uh, your motion system. And to pack the bearings in here, it's actually quite simple. Um, you take your grease, again, I'm just using the uh, super loop here as an example, and you're gonna actually push some into the bearing, okay? You don't need to fill it up. You don't need to fill it up, but you do need to get a good amount in there. Any excess will ooze out. Put your finger over the other end or your thumb, and this will hopefully seal the other end. And then you're gonna take your rod and you're gonna push it into the bearing. And you're gonna push until you feel the resistance. And you should see some come out the other end. And this will mean that it's packed. At that point, make sure you have some uh, paper towels or rag handy. So what you did there by forcing it close and pushing the rod into it, you forced all the grease to flow into the channels where the ball bearings run, properly packing the bearing with grease. So this is going to ensure that you have a good amount of grease in the motion system and everything should stay properly lubricated. And what you could do at this time is before final assembly, just clean off any excess grease again, prevent gunk buildup in use because really the only grease that matters is the grease that's in the system. Now, another tip is when you are final assembling, take a look at where the bearing runs are. Hopefully the camera can catch them here. You should see four of them, okay? Now, when you're assembling, say you're building your printer on this bench here and your bed is gonna move in this direction. You're gonna want your bearings orientated in an X pattern or a box pattern. So you want your bearings like that and like that, or a box, so it makes a box. You don't want your bearings in a way where you have a cross. Okay, so when you put your rod on and you assemble it in your printer, you want it so that you have a bearing set here and here and here and here for motion going this way. Same thing with vertical. Um, you don't want your bearings up top and the bottom. Remember, gravity is a thing and there will be ever so slight amount of slop in the system. It's not gonna be perfect. So if your bearings are arranged that you have a guide on the top and the bottom only, and then on the sides, what will happen is you're only running on one set of ball bearings if there's weight on the bed. So you, you, you want to rotate it a bit. So you do have that cross or box pattern. That way it's running on two sets of bearings uh, when there's weight on the bed, for example. So that's just something to keep in mind when you are doing your install after lubricating your linear bearing. And lastly, we're going to take a look at linear rails. Now these ones can be the trickiest ones to lubricate for motion systems. Uh, the reason for that is access to the ball bearings. Now, again, you can't just take grease, put it on the rail and hope to move the carriage over and lubricate it properly. This red plastic rubber piece you see here is a wiper. This is going to prevent any grease or oil or grit from getting at the ball bearings. It's to help keep it contained and keep it clean. So we're going to have to get the grease onto the ball bearings another way. Now, on some carriages, they do have a grease port. Uh, this is more common on the higher end carriages. However, on lower end ones, you may think you have a grease port. So let's take a look at this one here. And this has the wiper removed and you can see that hole there. And so you may think that's a grease port, but if we were to take it apart, um, that hole doesn't really go anywhere. So on some carriages, you may actually have a grease port and on some you do not. So an easy way to tell if you actually have a grease port or not, on some of the higher end ones, they actually have a grease nipple there. Others just have a hole. And what you're gonna wanna use is a large gauge uh, needle uh, with a blunt tip. Now, unfortunately, I can't find one. I bought one a while ago and I can't find it. So I'm using a, uh, a kid's medicine dropper as kind of a substitute right now. And it's filled with some uh, grease. And while this won't be a perfect application, if you try to force grease in, 
If it goes in, the hole may lead somewhere. If it doesn't go in anywhere, odds are it's a blind hole. It's not going anywhere. You could disassemble it to check, or you can just not risk uh, losing all these ball bearings and having to reball your carriage. Say we didn't luck out. This hole leads nowhere. We can't grease it through a grease port. How are we going to lubricate the ball bearings? Easiest way is to flip it over. And then you can see you have a gap here. Now it's not a large gap. And this is why you want that needle, uh, that large gauge blunt needle to force the grease into there. But essentially you're just gonna force the grease in. Try and use like your finger to really ensure that the grease gets forced into the bearings themselves. And then move it around, maybe apply again, move it around again, and keep doing this until you get as much grease as you're satisfied with getting into the motion system. And then of course, wipe off the excess. Now another option, and this is something that I've been doing more and more lately with uh, linear rails and carriages here, is use spray grease. Um, so right here, this is some spray on white lithium grease. Um, the PTF grease is apparently better. It lasts a little bit longer, uh, but this is what I have right now. And this makes it a lot simpler because for these tight holes here, especially in carriages like this MGM seven carriage and rail here, um, there really is not a lot of room there to get grease in. So when you're dealing with a tighter uh, spot, you're trying to get grease into using spray grease and just kind of spraying it and letting it soak in, move it around. This can make things a lot easier, a lot less, a lot easier, a lot more hassle free um, than fiddling around with some of the thicker greases. Now, I do have a couple machines that I've greased up like with this stuff and they're still going on uh, quite well months to weeks later. Um, I'm not noticing any issues with uh, lubrication on the rails, so it is holding up pretty well. Now, as always, anytime you're handling any grease or lubricant, uh, you are gonna be wanting to wear gloves. You don't really want this stuff all over your hands uh, or especially on your clothes. That's usually not a good idea. And then also a question I do get asked often is, mine came oiled from the factory. I don't even need to grease them. No, that is wrong. Now, when these are brand new, you will see a lot of the time they do come with oil on them, but usually that is just a rust preventative oil. Now, linear rails here, unless they are stainless steel, they're just steel. So after you grease and lubricate them, you are gonna want to actually keep the rails themselves a little wet. Either, you know, wipe off the excess grease, but don't actually clean it off with like ISO and just leave a, a thin coat on it, or spray some form of rust preventative like WD-40 on the rails to prevent them from rusting. But the actual oil that comes on them when you purchase the rails is a rust preventative oil. It is not a lubrication oil. So you're gonna wanna clean your carriages first before applying oil. Easiest way to clean them, if you have, for example, a ultrasonic bath, take your carriages, put them on a holder such as this. You can print holders like this, zip tie them together so they don't fall apart. Put them in a plastic baggie with some isopropyl alcohol. Put the baggie in your ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, fill the rest with water. Putting them in the baggie makes it so you don't have to use as much isopropyl to clean them. And then uh, let it run for a couple minutes and that should clean your carriages quite well. And then just wipe down the rails um, before greasing them up. Now, not everyone has an ultrasonic cleaner, of course. So how do you clean your bearings and your carriages without an ultrasonic cleaner. Well, you flush them clean as best you can. So using something like isopropyl alcohol or a degreaser or light cleaner of some sort, something that won't harm the plastics or uh, discolor the metals, for example. And what you do is you just flush out the rust prevention oil. And this can also flush out any grit that still may be in the carriage and the ball bearing runways from manufacturing. Now, it used to be that these linear rails, especially the ones from AliExpress and China, the lower priced ones used to be pretty gritty um, from the factory. But over the past couple of years, they've definitely improved in quality. So now most of the time, uh, a quick flush, just to ensure that you're getting out all the rust prevention oil and any potential dust or grit before greasing them up is really all you need to do. The same with the bearings, you can soak them in ISO and then fill them with a cleaner of some sort, 
run them over the rod and this just kind of circulates everything, make sure everything gets flushed out as best you can. Now, of course, the methods that I've covered in the video aren't the only way you can go about uh, greasing up your rails, your linear bearings and your lead screws, for example. There's other methods. I'm sure there will be some people that don't agree with my methods, but I found that these are relatively simple. They're easy to do at home and they do work quite well for a 3D printing application. So if you have any other ways of lubricating and cleaning your linear rails and carriages, uh, post them in the comments below. The more information that we get out there, the better. So I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, as always, ask them in the comments below. If you wanna see more content such as this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. I do do weekly streams on the weekend where we build 3D printers and go over some other things in the 3D printing and tech sphere. So make sure you're following along for that. And as well, if you wanna help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description for that. I hope you learned something new today. And as always, have yourselves a great day. Cheers.